is Jason Wilmot. Uh, I am a teacher within LPS. Um, has anyone ever seen me in their classroom? I came to talk with Lori in her uh, classroom before. Was that in any of your classes? Terrific. So, all right. Uh, so let me give you a little bit of my background as to what I do and why I use Google Classroom rather than just hopping into how to do it. I always feel like the why is more important than the how. Um, so I'll kind of back up. So I am the, uh, the computer specialist at Campbell Elementary. I've got about 650 kids that I teach computers to. Uh, I'm in my second year with that. Um, but before that, I was a classroom teacher at Saratoga. Um, I taught there for six years. It was, um, and the last year, my sixth year, I came to a Tech Edge conference. I met Lori and Guy, and things changed from there. I sat in on a, um, a session regarding flipped classrooms. The presenter had never done it before, but he was presenting on the idea of it. And I came away really liking that idea, and in so much that I like the idea, um, I started doing it with my students in fourth grade and we kind of did the whole flipped classroom from math all the way through uh, my last year. Am I talking too loud? Um, at, at Saratoga. And so what I learned during that time was that it is really cool when you can take a math lesson or a lesson that you would give to all of your students and individualize it for everyone. They can pause it, they can back it up and do all that. And since then, like, the, the light bulb kind of went off in my head. Why am I kind of like just teaching the same way to all these kids when rather we need to slow down, individualize it, personalize it? And that kind of put me on the mode of technology got me on the tech train and all on, and all that. So with that, I actually applied for a job at Campbell Elementary School, uh, and I took that job and learned how to kind of start embedding tech with that. I put it into their, 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 their daily lessons um, and uh, just started using that more and more and more. In fact, it kind of led me, um, get this rolling again if it bothers some people. Um, it kind of got me into Minecraft, which Rick is presenting on today. Um, but that's what I'm doing this year, and I've really started um, just looking at programs, thinking outside the box, thinking outside of you know your traditional academic experience. So the problem that I now have in my computer lab, I'm almost getting there. Um, the problem that I have with the computer lab is this. Um, all the kids want to do is just get on Minecraft, which is absolutely awesome because um, you know I'm kind of writing and working curriculum into that. Uh, so when they're not on Minecraft, I don't want to waste their time basically. And one of the things that I, the best way that I found to actually utilize their time and put something relevant in their lives is using Google Classroom. So this is what I want to do today. I want to show you how I'm using it. Then I'm going to use it with you. You will be my my students so you'll get actually the whole flow and everything and it shouldn't take 45 minutes um, just because it's not that big uh, but hopefully we can we can uh, bust through it and you can have we'll have time for questions and then you might even have time to set some lessons up um, are you all student teachers in here or are you practicum teachers all student teachers perfect okay cool so uh, let me get started with this and um, I'll kind of just walk you through. It's not, um, it's not terribly, um, terribly different than Edmodo. Um, is anybody using Edmodo in their classes right now? Nobody. Is any of your cooperating teachers using Edmodo? Warren. Okay, well, cool. Um, so Edmodo is kind of like Facebook for kids. That's how I sold it to my class. Um, they really like, like, there, there's a stream and everybody can kind of connect and communicate. So that was, that was really cool. I, I, I used that for two years. And then when Google Classroom came out, I decided to stop using Edmodo. Uh, and the main reason why I did that was uh, because when Google does something, they're probably normally going to do it better. Uh, so I just kind of scratched Edmodo and went right to Google Classroom. And I loved it because there were so many tools inside. So what I want to do is show you kind of one of my classes. Um, of course, they're going to be the best class uh, because you always put your best foot forward. Um, so this is this is how it kind of looks. I've got a stream. I've got a board that kids can post to. Um, they can communicate with one another. Um, um, so. So. <laughs> Uh, so this is kind of the way, and kids love this because they can get on from home and kind of chat back and forth. This is a Facebook, it's a face, 
or it's a safe environment because people can't come in, you have to join with the group code. Uh, so once they kind of buy into this little community, then I can actually start embedding things, and that's what I want to show you next. Um, so we, here's our stream. This is kind of like their message board. Um, the kids can actually click on students, and um, and everyone's emails pull up, so they can sit at home and email back and forth with one another. So this is another handy tool. And within LPS, all the students do have an email. That's how they connect into this. Um, so after, well, and then this would be like a little asterisk of, do you want second graders being able to email one another? Uh, and this is the hookup, the, the, the hiccup that I found. Um, and there's no really way to block it, but so far we haven't had any problems. Uh, but I'm sure that we will probably throughout the year, so um, not sure how we'll go about this, but um, Google Classroom is only like four weeks old, so um, just because we haven't figured out all the, the, the kinks doesn't mean that we shouldn't uh, be using it, so. Um, okay, now the assignment part. That's what I really liked about this. I don't like necessarily the assignment, but uh, it's just the word that they picked. So um, on here you've got two different things, announcement. It's just kind of something that you can share with your class, but um, I want to show you what an assignment can actually do. So I've given an assignment of uh, why, what are the benefits of Minecraft in school? And so you can give assignments different ways. You can just post it to your board like this, and I'll let you read some of the uh, replies. So you can do this with like writing prompts. You could do this, you know, fourth grade writing, you have to write leads. You can say, hey, write a lead about X. Um, second graders, you could say constructor, constructor story, you could do math problems. So this is just an easy way. And now the cool thing about an assignment is actually this little area up here is it gets to, um, if I click on this, it will actually pull up um, where a spot where I can grade them um, and then if they have replied to it or not. Uh, so this is kind of the real cool feature that Edmodo doesn't have. It lets you see what students have turned in. Uh, most of the time I don't grade it because I'm not using uh, this interaction to grade, but I just did want to show you that feature. So I'll show you one more different thing. Um, this is a different uh, assignment that I put. So within this assignment, you can actually have kids submit, submit uh, either a Google Doc or Google Form, uh, not a form, that's a lie, a spreadsheet. And they can actually take something and send it to you. That's what you'll be doing today. Whenever I do send out all of those assignments, there is a quick way to get to it actually from your homepage. And that's just on here. These little folders. Um, if you click on those, those actually have the assignments that you've given and then you can go in. So there's like a whole data, there's like a whole directory system built in behind all of this. Okay, so this is kind of hard to just sit through, so instead we're going to join and do it together. So if you have a computer or a device, you can get that out. And if you don't, just snuggle up to somebody next to you. Um, and then I need you to go to Google Classroom. Uh, you can just Google search that. You'll have to sign in with your Google account. If you don't have a Google account, well, then you are out of luck. The way that Google Classroom works is you join a uh, group by inserting a group code. There will be like a little uh, go to classroom button, and then there will be a little plus sign saying add this group code, and you can add that there. So let me do, let me post an assignment for you. Let me show you, here's the kicker, let me show you why you should be using this when you are student teaching. Uh, when you post an assignment, you can do a couple different things. So you can uh, change the due date, you can do add a time, um, you can make anything so that it, it, it pops up like a little alert on their wall. So I've done this in the past where, okay, I could just type in. So what I was going to do today was I was going to create a Google document I was going to share it with you. 
I was going to add an assignment, or at the time it would be due today. And then what I can do from here is actually go into my Google Drive account and attach a assignment. So if I just think of one, um, I could type it up the night before, or five minutes before class, or during a meeting, and uh, I'll just show you how to do that. So I have this. Let me open it up for you too um, in a separate separate account. Take it, Josh. So let's see if we can find Take it, Josh. So this is what I was going to send you. Um, what is your favorite time of year? All you were doing. So this is kind of like a writing prompt, right? So I used to teach fourth grade, a lot of different writing. This is the way that I used Edmodo and got online most of the time to just kind of chat back and forth. So what you have here is this little thing that kids can type in. But what you don't see is this, there's a, on, Go on a Google Classroom, there's a little button here that says turn in. So kids can do all their work, and when they turn it in, then it goes to your inbox, it goes to done. Um, and uh, one feature that I can do with this is I can either um, just have them view the file. So I could send out like a PDF just to gather information. I could click on students can edit file. So we could all work on, that was the goal for today, that we could all work on this Excel document together. You could put your name. I said, would you, do you prefer tea or coffee, muffin or scone, um, and then something else. So uh, you can do that individually, or you can actually take the, the one uh, document that you make and send a fresh copy to each person individual. So uh, you, you don't have to hand out copies anymore. All you have to do is make one. You can either have them share it, or you can spread it out amongst all of them. Does that make sense? Okay, so tell your neighbor the three things that you can so do with are, Google yes, uh, Classroom for just this part, just for clarifying. Okay, a couple other things that I was going to share with you is just how, it's it's a good way to communicate with parents too. If the kids can log on, show their folks at home what they did. Now, Twitter is probably a better way to communicate one on one with your folks or send out you know push out mass messages. But a lot of the kids like to get on home and share stuff with one another. I've had fifth graders make iMovies at home or create like they're working on Minecraft and they make something cool. They'll take a screen grab and then put it on their uh, their their Google uh, Doc, and that's kind of what I want to show you next. Um, and then, uh, that'll kind of be that. So, oh, one more feature. Let me show you this before I go. So I was going to send this out to, I could create an assignment and send it out to you, uh, but I have 30 different classes at Campbell, uh, and if I wanted to send them out to them all, I can just click on all of those. So this is super, super, super handy to push out an assignment or push out a notification or anything very quickly and get almost immediate feedback. So this is a completely useful tool that is 100% not useful for this presentation. Um, that would be irony, I believe. Yes. Um, so let me just show you a couple more ways that I've used this. So um, one of the things that I did with Minecraft Math was we had the kids I, the kids, uh, take a screenshot, and then, so this was their assignment that I said, create two math problems, take a screenshot, post it in, just because I wanted to get them the idea of posting, learning how to take their, what they've made a product, and I think a screenshot is one of the like, most essential things that kids can learn how to take, either like the, the click or the command F3, or shift F3, um, and then gather it there. So what they did, um, and you can, I, I can look at all of them this way by clicking on this. So I um, put, no, that's the wrong spot. I'll oh, go I out here I didn't hit, there's only to my home. home. Oh, well, you yeah. And there, like I said, the folder is where you want to click to get so kind of all your, your directories. Um, and then there's just all of the projects in one spot, um, which is really awesome. So this is one of the pictures. Let's hope that I click on good. Okay, so there's some. 
Uh, they were using they were using the, the number blocks and manipulatives. Uh, this is kind of above and beyond. Um, but this is just kind of the idea. It's giving kids the ability to just share things online. We didn't need worksheets. We didn't need, um, I didn't need a grade book. Everything was just kind of put all in one spot for me. Um, that's kind of it. I, I feel really bummed that um, you're not able to connect with me because I want to share a couple different things and I want to make like a little community for you. But um, you're going to have to do that on your own um, for that. So our, I can take a few questions and if uh, somebody figures out, you can always email me later on. Yes? Well, of course I have one. No, no, so go I'll for give it. you a couple of them. One is, I was wondering about collaboration within small groups versus just the whole groups yeah. doing a Google Doc. Uh -huh. so can you set up groups? Uh, and then number two, is there anywhere for like individual student portfolios, like you can yeah, collect I mean, one student's work all together somehow? Semester, so can the students do that, or is this just together. more okay. teacher tools? That is a good question. I'll have to write down the second one. Okay. Um, but how they can collaborate is, um, that's a great question. I haven't had them do that yet, but some of them actually have. Um, so what you would do is you would make an assignment, just like before, and then you, could, you would put it to students can, you'd make a copy for each student, and just like in Google Docs, um, um, so instead of clicking the turn in, Students would click the share button and share with one another, and it works perfectly that way. Um, so yeah, students can eat, so you so you could either do a whole class projects, you could do one on one, they could do groups of three, four. So the collaborative part is super easy. I don't remember your second question. What is that? Well, it had to do with is there any functionality on this for students? Like oh, like one student to collect all their things. Okay. That is a good question. Can I look into that? Or? I'll shoot you an email. Yeah, okay. I haven't. I haven't tried. Like I said, like I've been using this. It's been out for four weeks. I've been using it for three weeks, and I don't. I haven't used it that way. That's okay. I just want to. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Are there any other questions? Yes. What grades? That's a good question. Um, so. I've only used this with three, four, and five. I used Edmodo with second grade last year as well. Um, the reason why I haven't done it with second grade this year is because um, the reason I haven't done it with second grade is just because I haven't found a purpose for it yet, other than just like the chat, and I will. Um, but you know, I've. I don't know how young you can get kids online, but as long as they know their password then you can get them all. So what are second graders, like seven? So I've had seven-year-olds doing this. So, okay. Just not Google Let me show you a serious question. Um, let, me let me get a class. quick this scan of the room. Who is an elementary long. teacher in here? Okay. So most of us. In the middle school, like high school. OK, so just because you're elementary school, you think like, oh, we don't need. No, absolutely, you so, can use this. So encourage your teachers to use this. If not, encourage them to use Edmodo. This is like a little Google Classroom Junior. Uh, and maybe it could be like the step up. Uh, but otherwise, I think it's a good, uh, a, a great classroom component that you can use in and out of school. So uh, I assigned them work this morning uh, from where I was. Not because I didn't have sub plans done, uh, just because I didn't have my sub plans done. <laughs> so, okay, yes. So what's the situation with LPS and Google Classroom? They're a full on board okay. with that? Um, okay. The situation so is the that uh, they want to, th okay. there hasn't been like an official word, okay. um, but I would say about half of the teachers are using Edmodo uh -huh. and other teachers are using Google Classroom. The reason why kids like Google or Edmodo are there's like little built-in game apps that they can kind of uh, get points and credits and all that kind of stuff for. Uh, Google Classroom doesn't have that, but I see like the functionality. For me it works because I don't have time for kids to be doing the other things because most of the time they're on Minecraft. So this is like the most, it's relevant, it's meaningful, and it, and if I'm going to teach my kids anything, um, I can, I can, well keyboarding is important. I tell them it's like brushing your teeth, you know, you don't want to do it, you have to do it a little bit uh, to start off the day, but if I can just bounce straight into something where they can get to talking. Uh, my wife said, 
She said, I hated keyboarding, but I never learned a keyboard until AOL came out. Now, I don't know if you folks were on an AOL. Okay, that was like this might. That was awesome. Um, it's not even around anymore, but kids want to type, but they don't just want a keyboard. So there's a difference there. So um, I'm not really answering your question. There's the, the only people that are using Google Classroom are the people like me who are just trying to figure it out. Okay. But I mean, they're supportive of it. They're, they're absolutely not supportive. Anything. Yeah, no, no, that's, that's good. Yeah, you can use it. Anything else? There is my rule. Okay, well, uh, I'll just dismiss you then. And if you do have questions, I can bounce around. I'm about 15 minutes early, but uh, we don't have a lot. Um, you can. Um, let me put my information on the board. And it was going to be in your Google Classroom. Um, I do a lot of writing about education. I do a lot with uh, Minecraft. So if you want to follow me on Twitter, my handle is Mr. Jason Wilmot. I'll put that on the board. And then my blog is just jasonwilmot.com. And I can decide. Um, and then what I wanted to do was shoot you a 20 ways to use Google Classroom via Google Classroom, but that didn't work either. Um, so I'll just, there's my handle right there. If you have questions, um, and then my, my blog is just jasonwallet.com. And I can talk with you about several different things if you'd like. Otherwise, thank you for coming. Sorry that it didn't work. That's a, that's a huge bummer um, that we need to figure out. But that happens. So thank you for being flexible. Okay, have a good day.